Hi, it's Dia. Today we're going to use this image from my coloring book, Penelope's Garden, and we're going to use Spira Farben and Hero colored pencils, and we're going to turn it into this. So basically we're coloring rocks today. Rocks can be intimidating. There's a lot of empty space and a lot of people look at them and they don't know what to do with them. I think the first I think the first idea is to color them gray and maybe put a little shadow, which is fine. And you can do that because not every rock holds a prominent place in a picture. But these rocks, for instance, are in the foreground and I wanted them to look interesting and hold a nice place in the entirety of the picture. And there's a little mouse there too, so I wanted them to be prominent. So the first thing I did was take a hero pencil number 108 otherwise known as cool fog now it's also known as cool fog because I did an entire swatch chart and I renamed them and if you want a copy of that I will put the link below so what I did was very lightly go over the entire area here with that color Now this is number 36, also in the hero set, otherwise known as Sparrow. And I'm going on the side that would be facing us and the opposite side of where the sun would be shining. You can see the shadow indications in front of, of the rock. So that means that the light source would be in the distance. So the area facing us would be a little bit darker. So I'm taking that Sparrow color or 36 and I'm trying to decide right here, am I going to leave those indications of, of those lines and um, make the rock look like it's done in layers or, I'm, or am I just going to fill it in? And I'm not quite sure yet, as you can tell, I'm a little bit trepidatious in the way I'm coloring, but um, I know the, the entire area has to be dark just because of the shadow. Now I'm going to take the same color and form a little bit of an indentation on the farther side of the rock just for some interest. Um, that area looks like there's a little bit of a dip there so that would be indicated by a shadow. Whoop, now I'm going back and forth still trying to, to decide how detailed I am going to make this rock. A nice thing about coloring rocks is that there are so many different textures and so many different shapes that you don't have to worry about it being perfect. Many areas have to look smooth or shiny or very exacting. You don't have to do that here. I mean, if you, tr if you, if you make a mistake, sometimes it's a happy mistake, as Bob Ross would say. I think he said happy accident. But it, sometimes it's a really good thing because it wouldn't have happened or you wouldn't have thought of it on on your own but maybe it adds to the texture or it adds to the detail of the rock and it really works. I'm adding some more darker colors here and maybe that area of the rock would dip in a bit. So it adds another lovely layer um, to the rock so it's not perfectly gray, it's not brown and it's not exactly green either. So I'm going over some of the areas that I already did and I left this pencil not uh, not quite dull but not quite sharp. I left it because there's a kind of a nice flat surface on the one side that I'm coloring with and I'm not pushing very hard but I'm I'm allowing the texture of the paper to show through which I thought was kind of nice for a rock because the rock would have all kinds of textures to it anyway. I'm going back in with 73 like I said before I was I was going to find other areas of the rock where I thought that the sun might hit. Now here is number 48 otherwise known as warm haze and I'm going over 
all of the other grays that I already put in there. It might seem like it's a waste of time, but it's really not because every single one of those colors is slightly different. And every time you put another layer on top of an, an older layer on colored pencil, you add to the texture and you add to the depth of the image. You can see that I'm turning the pencil. Some, sometimes I want it super sharp and sometimes I want a little bit more of a dull surface. This is number 36. Back to Sparrow again. And I decided I was going to add some lines on, on the side because in that area, it, it seems like it would be a desert type of area. You can see the cactus there. Um, so I thought it would be nice to make it make some indications of like a sedimentary rock kind of feel. I left a white edge right underneath that area that I was that I was coloring because later on I'm going to add some interesting colors to that well as interesting as rocks get and I wanted it to be noticeable and it's much more noticeable if there's a lighter color behind it and it wouldn't be muddied too much by the grays or um, that that mossy color. Now I'm taking 36 again and I'm adding some texture. I'm truly going back and forth um, almost doing a little uh, scumbling which is a technique that you can use in painting with a dry brush and you can you can use obviously colored pencils also and you're you're adding texture to a surface. So you can see those little back and forth kind of lines um, it doesn't have to be perfect once again and it almost makes it look more like the surface of an actual rock rather than just a smooth kind of area and yes there are smooth rocks but this one I thought I would add a little bit more detail Now I'm taking a super sharp drafting pencil with a regular two, number two lead and I'm making those details of the sedimentary type of layers a little bit more noticeable. And I like this color for shadows and I'm finding out I like it for rocks too. It's a very nice, you know, neutral, typical graphite color. I'm, I'm adding some more details, maybe little shadows on the surface of the rock. And it never hurts to go over the shadowy area with a regular pencil also. Now I'm taking the Spira Farben Black. Let me see what number that actually is. 33 is black in Spira Farben. Now I made some of those lines sort of not quite exactly vertical but tipped over to the side and I'm going to leave them because I like the way it looks. It's a little bit stylized. There's a little bit of not quite cross hatching there but almost. The Spira Farben Black is really nice, really creamy and super black. Here I'm taking a barbecue skewer and I'm lightly pressing into the surface of a few rocks and I'm even going over the area that I already did on the other rocks because it's another way to leave highlights and indications of texture. Now I'm going over those lines with number 36. So I'm starting this littler rock, a darker color than I started the previous rock. Now you can already see those lines that I just etched in with the skewer. You don't have to worry about being careful or drawing lightly because the pencil is just going to color right around them. So I'm coloring even the side facing us, the, sh the shadowy side, with the 36 because I'm just going to go right over the top of it with the Spira Farben Black, again 33. And then I'm going to go over a little bit 
on the surface with, with the black also to make those etches even show up more. I'm also going to go back in with 73 after this and add some sunny highlights to the front of the rock. Oh, here we go. And on this rock you can see that I'm going right over the gray for just an indication of that glow. Now here's an unusual color for a rock. It's almost like a peachy pink and it's number 36. So I went lightly over that area and then I thought it would be nice to add some to the first rock. So that's what you're seeing me doing here. I didn't do the whole thing, just an area on the shadowy side. And then I'm going to go back to this, this rock. And I didn't do the entire thing. I left that almost as a, like a, a, a highlighted area. Now this is number 73, again, Spira Farben. Nope, sorry, that one's 72. It's slightly more yellow, and I'm going right over the top of that pinky color. And this is number 14. And as you can see, I'm not going over all of the areas completely with any color. Oop, now I'm taking that same color, 14, and adding it to the areas that I left white in the, f in the first rock. I am going back and forth a little bit, but I do have a tendency to do this because, once again, some, sometimes I feel like the image is done and then I look at it a few minutes later and I think, oh, I can add this, I can add that. I think especially with colored pencils because there's a lot of layering, you're not quite sure what the perfect thing is at the moment. This is number 21, also Spira Farben. And I'm using a, a little bit of a layered feel here. That area in, in the rock I thought would be more indented than the other areas, so I made it a little bit darker. And I love this color because it's warm and it does feel like a desert color to me. Now, here's here's an example of there there was nothing there to indicate that 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 shadow, but I thought since that rock went in a tiny bit right there on the right-hand side that it would be nice to add more interest and more detail there. And since the side that we're looking at is is the shadow side why not? Oop, there is number, I think that's 36. And I'm going right over the top of those other warmer colors with a gray to indicate more shadows. If you're watching this and you've seen any of my other videos, you've heard me say before, that if you don't like a colored pencil drawing, probably, meaning a colored pencil drawing that you're doing, it's probably because you're either rushing it or you're just not done with it. A colored pencil is a really hard medium to get used to and to use and to master at all. I feel like I'm practicing every single day. Here's number 35. All these almost pinky colors add warmth to the to the rocks without making them seem unrealistic. So, like I was saying, you you can see me going over and over and over with with colors and areas that I didn't even consider going over previously. So, take take your time and don't worry about making mistakes.
because like I said before, some of those mistakes are great things and you learn a lot from, from the mistakes too because it might be something you didn't consider doing consciously. So if you ever look at a picture or an image, even if it's a coloring image, whatever you're doing and you're not quite sure what to do with it, look it up. It's really hard to know what to do with every single thing. And the internet, as we all know, is an endless source of almost everything. So look up, look up rocks, look up rocks in the desert. Oop. I'm just doing that little rock really quickly. I was using number 36 and number 14 Spirofarben pencils. I'm going back in now with number 52 and adding like a real nice sunny glow to the to the top of that uh, golden looking rock. Now that little tiny rock that I was just working on a, f a few seconds ago. Sure, I want to add dimension and detail to it, but I probably won't spend as much time. First of all, it's very tiny. And second of all, it's it's not the most important thing in the picture, so that's fine. Now I'm adding some more golden colors. And I am mentioning colors, but feel free to pick whatever you like. Your rock doesn't have to look exactly like mine, but I, I, I get it during a tutorial that it's probably a little bit easier to copy. And truly, copying is a great thing, especially when you're learning something, because you do have muscle memory and you get used to things. Now this is number 36. And I thought that this rock might be a little bit maybe quartzy, so slightly transparent. So I'm using an, another unusual color for a rock. So I'm using the 36 Spirofarben and that mossy green Spirofarben from before. I'm looking for it. Number 77. Now the problem with 77, well not that there's a true problem, but the barrel doesn't quite match the tip, so it gets a little confusing when you're trying to find that. The tip almost looks like a blackish gray, and the, the color on the end that indicates the color of the pencil is very, very light, so I guess it doesn't click sometimes. Now I'm going over that area with 72, sort of blending it in and adding a little bit of warmth. Going back to 36 to add even more pink. And on the top, I'm, I'm leaving lines and not quite blended looking shapes on purpose. Here's number 108, or Cool Fog in in the hero set and I'm and I'm adding a lighter shadow or a lighter indication of the shadow on the actual rock because the rock itself is lighter. There's that mossy gray from Spira Farben. You can see me twirling around the pencil. And I do that for thicker lines and thinner lines. That's number 36, or Sparrow. Just adding a few little fine details in there. Some lines and maybe a little bit of scumbling to add texture to the rock surface. I, s I increased the speed of this area just because I'm going over and adding with number 36 or Sparrow just a little bit more shadow areas. Now I thought that I would add some not quite sand but some indications of, of sand so I went over all the areas around the outside of the rocks with number 72. I just wanted to show how pretty the rocks looked 
in their proper environment. Here is Spira Farben number 40. I just love this pencil for so many reasons. This is a gorgeous, I don't even know what you would call it. I have to think of it when I name the set, but it's a cool, gorgeous blue, and I love it for backgrounds like a midnight sky. And I also love it here because, of course, the desert is supposed to be warm, but I love that juxtaposition of cool and warm. So obviously the sun is setting, and the shadow area, any shadow area, is a little bit cooler. So this color indicates that perfectly. So I'm going over very lightly on those little dotted areas in front of, in this case, the rocks. Now I'm taking a Prismacolor blender and lightly going over everything because you can see even with just the lightest touch it does make the color more intense. And now I'm taking that same gorgeous blue and I'm making it darker in the area closest to the bottom of the rocks. Now I'm going to color the mouse real quick. I used 108 Cool Fog and for the shadowy areas I used number 36 which is Sparrow, the same colors that I used in the rocks for his little ears and his body and this pink is also a hero color. Let me see what color this is. Oh, this is number 58, and, ah, 58 is called Ballet Slipper, and the center of his ear is 26, which is pink jelly. Now I'm just going over the areas that I already did, scumbling a little bit, fussing a, a little bit, and that's about it. So I hope you liked this tutorial for how to do a few rocks. If you did, I hope you give me a thumbs up. And I hope you subscribe to me and you follow me below. This way you can take part in my giveaways and you can see my videos and you won't miss anything. So once again, I'm so glad you're here. I appreciate all of you and um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.